so we're talking about um, drugs and magic mushrooms, and you were telling us a little bit about God. I, uh, I went out raving with a bunch of mates one night, and um, at the time I was heavily, heavily, heavily involved within uh, distribution of psychedelics of all sorts, and um, basically it was a real big ego thing for me, and it very much overtook me. And I loved the drugs, and when I say I love the drugs, I mean I had an absolute passion for acid, mushies, all the two CIs and all that bollocks. And um, basically, that night, the night before, well, my friend Georgina, for about a year before, we'd been going out raving together, and she had basically very much explained God to me in a way which no one else had ever done. And Can you tell us about that? it was like I was brought up a Catholic, but I never believed. I went to a Catholic school, had it forced down my throat, and I, and I, I hated it, to be honest. I absolutely hated everything about it. And um, Georgina, throughout the year we were friends, after raving, when we go back to my little shed on a Sunday morning, she'd explain things to me so clearly and so beautifully in a way which this, I, I can't even explain. It was so peaceful and settling upon my mind. So anyways, this one evening I said to her, Georgina, I believe in God, I understand God and I respect him, but I will never need him because I am fine, I'm strong enough with him myself. And little did I know, 24 hours later, I was running across London Bridge and my kidney had started to fail after a psychotic episode. And I thought I'd been shot. And as I'm running across the bridge, feeling blood spilling down my sides, I ended up coming, crossing paths with two policemen standing at a bus stop. And I put my hands on their chest and I said, help me, I've been shot, I need some water. And before I knew it, I was on the floor in handcuffs with them two on top of me. And next thing you know, a wagon comes around the corner with five more officers. And because of the state I was in, they all had to restrain me. And whilst I was on that floor in such a confused and fearful state that the people I thought I could trust within their within their uniform had turned against me, I, through the hallucination of the drugs, had every single deep and dark fear happen to me whilst I was on that floor. And I wouldn't put Hitler himself through it. And they pulled out their taser. And I fully thought I was dying and this was my death. And that this, what was happening to me was the end of my life. And it was. And as I'm there getting tasered, on the third taser, I, for the first time in my life, was so helpless and so fucked that I, I wanted to die. And I'm not, I'm not a suicidal person at all. I'm the opposite of that. But the pain I went through on that floor, it was, it was, this world was too much for me at that point. And for the first time in my life, whilst I was on that floor, I, in my last breaths, I called out to God. And I looked to my left, and I looked to my right, and there were two big, beautiful, eight foot holographic angels and I felt my arms come free from the cuffs I was in and I start floating and I'm floating up and I'm feeling overwhelmed by all the love and all the warmth and all the joy and beauty of God and I was still very aware within my mind that I was dying as I was floating up towards heaven the sensation that overcome me 
made me realise that I did not care about the repercussions of what it would have done to my mum and my girlfriend and my family because I knew where I was going. I was going to heaven. And all of a sudden, I start falling. And as I start falling, and I landed back in my body, I got pulled up, thrown in a police van, and then I woke up a week later in intensive care from a coma with all my family around me crying their eyes out. And from then, within this year and 10 months, my life's changed completely. And God, he's using me. Because all the people and all the friends in my life, just like all you people, everyone who's going to watch this video, you know people, and you, it's yourself even, you've been through shit, and it's been painful. And I have to say this, just because I know that the majority of you are going to think you were on drugs, they were hallucinations. When I say I did my fair, my fair share of trips and drugs, you know what's a trip and you know what isn't. When I say my soul left my body, that's up to you to believe. My soul left my body. And through everything, I am so alive and so blessed and so overwhelmed with love and beauty and passion and the only drug I do Unfortunately, you smoke fucking shitty tobacco, which ain't gonna be for the rest of my life. This is just a shit habit. I've done drugs since, and they have really, really not clicked with me. And um, I'm telling all of you right now, there's a door being knocked upon, and it's your door. But there is no handle on the outside. There's only a handle on the inside, and that's your side. God's knocking at your door, and it's up to you to choose and open it. And I really hope and pray that you lot don't have to go through what I went through to call upon God. Because even if your life's perfect and everything's going sweet and fine, I promise you that if you open that door to God, the love and emotion and blessings that he'll give you will be just as powerful as mine. Basically, God's knocking on your door and um, I hope and pray that even if it's just someone, one of the people who watches this video, like, well, you may call me an ex-tripheads, you may call me a nutcase, but like, it's the truth. God bless.